uh, over the weekend. Did they think, get one? Yeah, they got one. Didn't they? I thought they got that first one. Oh, Saturday they won four to two. Okay. Uh, so Brewers end up taking two or three there. Five to four was uh, the loss yesterday. Uh, Guardians still under 500, I think. They had to yep. Kansas City to play the Royals. Uh, Carlos, who, Beltran and the Royals? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, be, uh, Brett Saberhagen and the – I don't know who the Royals have these days. Uh, the Royals don't know who they have Zach these Greinke days. Zach is like, like the main it. guy they've got. Anyway, uh, so the uh, tomorrow night we'll begin the series in Kansas City against the Royals. That'll be an 8-10 first pitch here on MMS. Uh, Guardians have yet to win 40 games. So it's a little hot and cold right now. And then they'll head to Wrigley for a series against the Cubs before they come home and host the Atlanta Braves, who will probably mop the floor with them. Braves are a very good team right now. Hey, Ron. Hey, how's it going? Uh, happy belated birthday, Alan. Bill, thanks for getting the live stream going. And uh, Mary, yes, um, you guys may have not had sex on your anniversary dinner, but uh, watching Brian eating the cheesecake, it looks like that was like the <laughs> next best thing. He said, he, so they have this homemade cheesecake over at Marlboro. He said that it was the best thing he's ever tasted, like across the board, not the best dessert, not the best cheesecake. He was literally, I posted a video on my Instagram as like a happy anniversary. Yeah. He couldn't speak. He was eating that cheesecake and he's like, I don't have words for how good this cheesecake is. So you're right. I was Maybe watching that's... it over and over and just <laughs> laughing my ass off. Yeah. We didn't have to have sex because Brian had cheesecake. <laughs> that cheesecake. Exactly. Yeah. But by the way, did you guys order for like five people? I we mean, did. the food you showed was like, what, like for a banquet. It was, um, you know, they were hooking it up a little bit, bringing us some happy anniversary appetizers uh, and, and del- delicious desserts and things like that. But, yeah, we definitely overordered. We had three to-go bags of food. <laughs> three to yeah, Three. I'm yeah. still eating That's, leftovers uh, today. Che- yeah, but if anybody hasn't seen it, definitely check out that uh, video of uh, Brian eating that cheesecake. Brian eating cheesecake. Uh, He's a big fan. Ron right. Likes it. Yeah. Well, there <laughs> you go. Yeah. You've got to see Mary's boyfriend eat cheesecake. <laughs> Compelling. Yeah. yeah. Best thing he's ever eaten, including Mary, according no, 100%. to one hundred percent. I go. tasted the yeah. cheesecake and it was better. That's a long three years, boy. That's Whatever how, I'm putting out. Yeah. yeah. That's how I felt yeah. yesterday. All right, guys. Thanks All a lot. All right, thank you. There's Ron out in Willoughby. There you go. What'd you get out yesterday? Uh, I had ice cream at Jenny's out in like Chagr- Chagrin Falls. I don't know. Try it again. Chagrin Falls. That's so cute down there. Yeah. So we we had ice cream there and I got this, I think it was lemon blueberry parfait. Mm-hmm. It was a lemon blueberry parfait ice cream, and I had it in a cone. I'm like, oh, oh my God. I, it, was, it was probably one of the greatest tastes I've ever tasted in my life. So that that was up there. I, I haven't had Marble Never been to Chagrin cake. Falls. It's it's like a real cute little triangle down It's like, like a little Hallmark area. town, right? It really is. It's shops and ice cream, and there's waterfall right there in downtown. It's really, really cute. How'd you end up over there, Cody? I was meeting. We, we were taking my friend's daughter to the park. So I, I was meeting up with my friend, and then um, her daughter just played in the park across the street. So we just got ice cream. It was I remember, or, I remember ordering a bunch of pints of Jenny's one time, and Gwen was like, "What the hell are we gonna do with <laughs> eight pints of ice cream?" I go, "It kind of got away from me a little bit." I was on their website, and I was like, "Well, that looks good. That looks good." Or I get these emails, or like, "Hey, if I," and she's like, "What the hell are we gonna do with all these?" I go, "I, I guess we'll eat them." I think we ate like half of them. The rest of them just got all chalky. I go, all right, lesson learned. I won't order half a dozen pints of ice cream and have them come in dry ice. And, you know, I got a little excited. I like ice cream, and I I, I don't eat it that often. Jenny's makes a really good um, vegan. They do do great. That's what she eats. So that's how it got away from me. It's like, you know, she ate some of that, and then I just got the regular stuff. And uh, If I'm not mistaken, I think they had a type of breakfast ice cream. Like, they... They said ah, bacon and eggs ice cream. No, it was something, it was something like that. It was it was like a biscuit. It was like everything that would be served on. I forget what the name biscuits of it was. And gravy ice they, cream. Now we're yeah. talking. They had like biscuits and it, they said there was like onions and stuff in it. I was like, I Ew. I'm really interested. Everything bagel ice cream. They do I, have that. that. Everybody that everybody's like. trying to like flip the script on ice There's cream. There's that ranch me. ice cream that came out a couple months ago that wasn't a hit. Yeah, it it was something oh, like that. Ranch <laughs> ice cream. Yeah, everything bagel. Maple soaked pancakes. They've got that. Uh, they've got cinnamon roll. But you're talking about like, um, you know, eggs Benedict ice cream or whatever. Chilaquiles ice cream. Mmm. Yum. 
Yeah, I'd never had Ginny's before. It was it was pretty, pretty damn good. good. I think it's out of Columbus, and then it's an Ohio yeah, ice cream. It's got, Columbus. Um, with your affinity for Columbus Pound Cake, I'm surprised you had never had Jenny's before. No, but there, are, there you know, Cleveland is a big ice cream town because we got, okay, now I'm aware of Jenny's, and then there's Mitchell's everyone raves about. And then when I lived over um, by Edgewater, we used to go to, uh, what was the ice cream place over there that's like very old-timey, almost looks like Willy Wonka on the inside? I don't know. Something... Chocolate or something. Something chocolate. I don't. I don't know. I forget. Moses, sweet Moses. Mo- sweet Moses. That's what it was. <clears throat> Sorry. Sweet yeah, something Moses. chocolate. In, in, in Gordon <laughs> Square is where that was. Sweet Moses. Yeah, we used to go there all the time, and the line was, was out place. of the door. Yeah, but yet they just couldn't make it. Uh, couldn't keep it open. Really so, closed. Those, yeah, closed, closed a while ago. Yeah. Damn. Uh, I think it was COVID that shut it down. I guess. I mean, but you didn't even know their closed pound cake. That's how much you liked it. But I hadn't lived over, like, I went because I lived over there. I don't really go to Mitchell's that much either. It's not a bad ice cream, but I don't live by a Mitchell's. So Plus, I you can just go. get it in the grocery store. And what ice cream is right around here? I want ice cream now. Heinen's. They sell Mitchell's. Oh, uh, yeah, Heinen, yeah. And they have, like, you can go get fresh scoop, not just the frozen oh. pints. They can, if there's some, I don't know if that's They will time. scoop it a, fresh. Might just do a Shake Shack shake. There I haven't go. been to Shake Shack yet. It's right across the street. I haven't been in you the Marvel room. For your I haven't dinner. gotten a Shake Shack. I haven't. Man, I still I gotta, never been to Marvel room either. I got to catch up. Yeah, I've never been to Marvel room. Maybe that'd be me and my boys' uh, year. When will that be? April. Next April. <laughs> <laughs> April. Hey, at least he's optimistic. Mm-hmm. He's glass half full about the whole thing. April. Ooh, that's a haul, son. <laughs> yeah, you think we're we're putting the cart before the horse there? No. I don't know which one of you is the cart and which one's the horse. Well, that new like bottom top terminology. <laughs> yes, that's what, exactly what, it what is. the old tiny gays would refer to. Mm, yeah, yeah. You know, putting the cart before the horse it depends on which straw we draw, yeah. and then I'll tell classic Mel- cart. I'll I'll <laughs> tell Melvin what to do. I gotta give you some money here. I'm happy to do it too. It's another chance. We're right back into it. Day one here, or our next round of uh, uh, grabbing money from the buzzard bookie. So. You got plenty of chances to win some of this money. I hope you do listen closely and good luck. This is your chance to bet with the Buzzard Bookie and win $1,000 now. Enter this nationwide keyword at WMMS.com. Credit. That's credit. Enter it now at WMMS.com. I was reading a story about Vanna White. You know, Pat Sajak has announced his retirement, I think, after this season. And Vanna White, his longtime cohort there, who uh, graduated from turning the letters to touching the letters so that they light up. And I'm wondering if this gambit that she's pulling now is smart or not. I can't quite get the, a, a feel for it. Now that Pat Sajak is retiring, Vanna White has said, if you want me to stay, I need more money. She's been with him since 1982. The two of them have done that show. He's 10 years older than she, but they've done that show for 41 years together. And I part of the thumbs up part of this is like, well, that audience probably loves her. The thumbs down part is Pat Sajak has kept Vanna White on that show. And I'm not sure that I I can't tell if she's overstating her value to the program, because my thought was, listen, they're just going to get Seacrest to replace Pat Sajak. And they'll probably just throw in Pat Sajak's daughter in the Vanna White spot. You get a couple of new generation hosts or whatever. I can't see Seacrest in Vanna White. It seems lopsided. Now there are people who say, I don't even watch Wheel of Fortune. I'm one of those people. But I'm always curious what people's thoughts are when it comes to, hey, if you want to keep me, give me more money. She's in the middle of negotiating her contract. You should just make her the host. I don't think people want to see her as the host. And I don't think she wants to be the host. But she doesn't have a job right now. Right, but what I'm saying is... They they don't need her at all. She's been... That's what I'm saying. She's been the number two for four decades. That's not somebody who's angling for the top gig. So she's like, hey, if I'm assigned a new deal, I want a pay raise. Now, under normal circumstances, it would be assumed that if you're signing a new deal, it's coming with a bump, Right. But you can't assume that huh. anymore. You just can't assume it anymore just because of the way uh, pay structures are. And like Now, this is a little different because it's a syndicated show. It's massive. It still prints money. But she hasn't had a raise in 20 years. Whoa. Oh, yeah. But she gets $3 million a year 
two, and he makes way more than that. He makes like 15, 20. She gets $3 million a year, but she's not doing anything. She's being be, she, to stay attractive. That's her job. Well, but she's also yeah. part of it. She's part of you it. You know, like that, but if they I were go getting, hand in hand. If I were getting $3 million, and 20 years ago, they I don't know what she's making before that, but if I were getting $3 million a year, remember, these shows shoot all their episodes in about three months, and then you're off the rest of the year. They bank them all out. So your shooting schedule is crazy for about 90 days. So she's basically getting a million dollars a month <clears throat> and going, hey, if you guys run it. So it's only because she will now be the the only familiar face on that show. And if you have the olds watching that show, which I assume is still, they don't get old people for their contestants. But I assume that those are the people who are primarily watching that show. Uh, but I don't know. Well, back, back in the day, she was like on Playboy and she was a she did host for him when he had a surgery a few years back, like pre-pandemic. He had to get like a. There you go. I don't know what he got. I say, um, let her host. Give her the fifteen million a year. Let her host. Yeah, That's but she's not. not a... She's not saying she wants to host. Maybe she's like, she's I just... want to make more money for what I'm doing now, which is what everyone wants, mind you. Every single person working goes, I want to make more money for doing the exact same job. Unless you want a new job that will normally come with more money, but everybody. Provided you like your job, even if you hate your job. Imagine you hate your job and you go, I'd like to make more money. Everybody would like to make more money. Yeah. Because no one's ever paid what they're worth, no matter what you do. If you're a welder, if you're doing this, no one's paid what they're worth. What about when people are paid more than they're worth? Like who? Uh, Billionaires. CEOs of companies? Yes. I'm not talking about that. CEOs of companies, uh, (laughs) like athletes that get like a big contract and then completely underperform well or sit like on the that. bench yeah, yeah but you can't always predict that either i'm talking right. about or people athletes that are in litigation when you give them a big giant contract like that and they can't play 13 well, games well that's not his fault i mean <laughs> that's that's the company's you know, that's the browns fault that's not his fault anybody that goes hey we'll throw you a giant bag of money and we'll just push all the litigation to the side everyone would grab that but i mean like in just your standard kind of largely merit based jobs Um, It's a wild situation. Michael Jordan, you know, we're talking about how he is selling his portion of the Charlotte Hornets. And he will make more money in that deal than he has in the entirety of his Nike endorsements. So over the course of the entire time that he has endorsed Nike, he's made about $1.8 billion over 40 years, right, for the year Jordan. My God. Selling his share of the Charlotte Hornets, he'll make more than that in like, like that one deal because when he bought his, you know, uh, professional sports teams have just exploded in worth. Even if it's a terrible team, it's still worth a lot of money. Which is insane. It's wild. It's that's, just that's why they keep turning stadiums into amusement parks because mm-hmm. they're like, hey, even if people, you know. Even if they don't want to watch the yeah, game, that we want them in the building. Short the stock. Mm-hmm. Like, hey, even if. Um, you know, or if your kid gets bored. Walking yep. around, yeah. Inning two. Yep. Here's a whole play There's place. There's a playground. There you go. Yeah. 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 So, um, the. I guess the team is worth about three billion dollars, and he'll pull about two from that. So that will be his pretty profit. good investment. Good job, Mike. <laughs> yeah, since he spent like six figures on on his portion some twenty now, years ago. Or not six it was. figures. He he. Uh, I thought he bought. I thought he like spent like six hundred like, million when he bought his portion. I thought it was oh two two hundred seventy five million two hundred seventy five million. So okay. that's a that's a real good no no return. no no that's a real good return. Right, but what I'm saying is Holy he God. only but it was like with yeah. another group he only paid twenty five million dollars of his own money and he's getting that much. Wow. Yes, oh, that's a, good for him that's because insane. when he because when he bought the Hornets they had a lot of debt mm-hmm. so he was like look we'll take some of this on blah blah you know like all this you yeah. know corporate crap goes it will take some of the debt and then blah blah blah. Who do you think is going to buy us? Who, iHeart? Yeah. I don't know. Who cares? <laughs> Are we for sale? <laughs> I mean, everything's for sale eventually. Well, yeah, I guess. It's, I don't know. Like, I don't so know many what the people... timeline is, but, you know, by the time we're done broadcasting our, in our lifetime, or by the time, you know, we're in our 50s, 60s, 70s. I'm in my 50s. By the time you're in your 80s, 90s, 100s, yeah. uh, there's going to be two corporations that own everything. It's going to be Amazon and Disney, and that's it. Right. 
No, I mean, for the number of companies that have made a run at iHeart just over the past five or six years and not gotten anywhere, I don't know. Don't know. But, uh, uh, yeah, I don't know. Okay, so I don't have... Maybe Michael Jordan will buy it. I was there we say, go. <laughs> maybe <laughs> this will come as a shock to you guys. I don't have $275 million. I don't know if you need that or not. I mean, you're eating at the marble room. What oh, the hell do I know? My goodness. It would be worth it if I did. Um... I have about $2,000. What do you think I could invest for $2,000 and get back $2 billion? Well, I don't think you can get I, – I think you could get a good return on that $2,000. I don't think you'll get $2 billion. Are you sure? All right. Yes. All right. But I'll get you a billion. Give me that $2,000 right now. <laughs> yeah, right. And then uh, how long was that that Jordan had? How long did he have the Hornets? Yeah. Like 20 years. Yeah, so, so if I give years. you two grand now, mm-hmm. you'll give me a billion dollars in twenty years. Give, maybe. No, that's there's, not how that works. A, maybe. There's, <laughs> no, I'll give you ninety percent odds, like ninety percent chance that I'm gonna give you a billion dollars in twenty years. But there's a ten percent chance you won't. Yeah, <laughs> it's that last ten percent. <laughs> The- Brian, you're a gambler. <laughs> How can you turn down those odds? Come on, man. I'm your friend. The I'm odds are good. Team. The odds are good. Also, give me the. Except they're not. Give they're, me your car as well. Those odds are not very likely. Those are good odds, objectively. Mm-hmm. Two thousand into a billion. Yeah, they're not mm-hmm. likely that he will do that. Ninety well, percent. Whose side are you on? Mine. I'm on the side of the little guy. Thanks, Alan. Appreciate you. Or the little girl. Hmm. All right. Fifteen hundred. Half a million, 10 years. Maybe. Is that a 95% chance? We'll go 97%. Oh, my God. <laughs> this seems like, let me call Brian real quick. This seems Don't like an Don't call Brian. No, I was going to say. If I told Brian, Bill we said gotta do this now, man. We got to do this now. Yeah, there's people that are hitting me up already on the live stream. They're like, <laughs> I want to make this deal. I only can get so many investors. If you don't pull the trigger now, you're going to miss out on a okay, billion and a half dollars. What is the investment? Can I know what the company is? It's or is it a surprise? It's a corporation. It's a big old corporation. <laughs> okay. And they make all the stuff. Everything. Yeah. So Amazon too. Bill's not looking yeah. for investors who are going to ask a lot of questions, is what he's. Well, see, that's and why since he Mary's me. perfect, yeah. she doesn't ask follow up <laughs> questions. Know. I've asked more questions in the last twenty seconds than I've asked in the last five yes, years. Yes, you have. <laughs> and she's still you pulling her shot. checkbook you lost out. Your chance. I lost my chance. Yeah. Now, I can get you back in. <laughs> But you got thousand dollars. No, this we're back to two thousand oh, dollars. Because I lost my chance at fifteen hundred. Yes. Uh, it's gonna be twenty one years. Okay. And uh, you're going to get six billion dollars out of it. I'm in. Where do uh, I sign? Just Venmo me two thousand dollars. Okay. I don't think you can do that much money on Venmo. But... <laughs> oh, you can. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'll try. You just my have friend. to do it in increments. Yeah. But the Brian's, total will be the same. Brian's going to be like, did you go to the casino? i like, actually, Bill promised <laughs> this is better odds than a slot machine, That's okay? really good odds. There you go. You can't turn down those odds. Uh, should I take a gig leading a church service? Listen, Bill. It's an investment. Yeah. You could you could take that gig and then get paid in your soul being saved. Yeah. What's that word I'm looking for? Salvation. Salvation. You could get paid in salvation. Yeah. There you go. You might be anointed with the Holy Ghost. There you go. You put, put all your money in stuff that, that doesn't exist. It's like crypto. <laughs> it's worth what people will pay. <laughs> That's right. It's anything. I'll stick with my index fund. Thank you very much. All right. I got to take a break. If you want to send a text, maybe you want to ask Bill about investment opportunities. I got all the big investment opportunities. Yeah. Uh, send me the money first. Ask questions later. <laughs> 35192, you want to text, you can listen anywhere on the iHeartRadio app. Rover's Morning Glory. So, Dieter, you go out to talk to station management about this colon cancer.